Hello, everybody. I'm going to now put us out online. There we go. And we're up and out and going on and we got it and everything's fine. And hello, everybody. How are you? It's Alex. It's our little pop-up show that we do once a week. Uh, uh, and um, um, I was in a depression today and I didn't feel like doing anything, but somehow I always feel I got to do this. Otherwise, I'm going to let a whole bunch of people down to begin with. And I don't want to let a whole bunch of people down to begin with. Okay. Uh, so here we are. And uh, uh, let's see here. We have a bunch of people waiting in our waiting room. Let me make sure they're all real people. Okay. Here we go. And I go admit all. And we hope that uh, there's nothing wrong there that all these people are terrific and perfect and the people we want. There's Charlene. She's definitely Charlene. Uh, that's definitely uh, Vernon Nunn. That's definitely Lynn LaFrisco. We're waiting, waiting for Marjorie Miller to join us. And uh, there is, um, uh, let's see here, uh, Mike Chisholm and Edward Berger is trying to join. Are you joining, Edward? Are you trying? That's yeah, right. Are you doing it. We we still have to. Edward says he's joining, but he's not. Ooh. Well, that's strange, Edward. Maybe you should try again. I don't know. That's strange. Okay, Edward. Edward, <laughs> uh, it says joining, but he's not joining. So, oh, wait a minute. Oh, here's Paul Levin. She's uh, she's uh, joining, uh, and uh, she's gonna. What what's happened? Oh, oh, there she is. Okay, there's Paula. But we're still waiting for Edward to like. Uh, he it says joining, but he isn't clicking his uh, his thing. So. Who knows? Hello, everybody. How are you? Good. How are you? Good. Mm. Everybody's got glasses on today, except for Marjorie. I think, <laughs> well, I, I found some lens cleaners, so I figured uh, I put them on and they. they... Those look good. I'll, I'll join you. Oh, there you go. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's a but unique I, club. The only thing <laughs> yeah. is, I, I need desperately need a haircut, but my barber isn't available. So. Well, your barber has claimed you never tip her. <laughs> well should i tip her absolutely yes <laughs> really oh okay oh len uh, what is it what's his name just uh what's uh, his name? here comes charlie okay um his computer forgot how to log in since he was gone well, for a week <laughs> edward was gone for a week and he may have forgotten how to do it yeah here comes edward Berger. there we go Yes, so we've got uh, at Lynn LaFrisco, and then we've got Mike Chisholm, and we've got Paul Levin, and uh, and of course uh, Charlie Wallace and uh, Edward Berger. That's right. I had a little trouble mm -hmm. connecting today. I know it's same yeah. like we're having trouble connecting. Yeah, that's right. Today. And, <laughs> well, well, how did you? Uh, you were were you born with that voice, or did you get? That's right. I didn't <laughs> mug. I didn't mug anyone with it. No, no, no. no you could have an accident. Uh, uh, oh yeah, that. No, I didn't have an accident. I don't think anyway. Remember this? Uh, I'm trying to remember. Andy Devine. Do you remember Andy Devine? Yeah, Andy? yeah. Yeah, that really weird voice. That's right. Well, it turned out he didn't have that voice when he was born, but at one point when he was a kid, somehow he got stuck in the throat with a with a with a, a limb or something or a uh -huh. uh -huh. and that caused that to happen to his uh -huh. <laughs> so that's what happened that's right that's hey, edward, hey, edward, edward we had a fake it last week yeah, I, I, yeah. I, I i saw the show later on. <laughs> <laughs> you did a good job yeah, 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 but no, we can't do it like you do it oh i know i know you know I think I think on your birthday we need to have a talk like Edward Burger Day. <laughs> <laughs> we may go on and talk like this for an hour. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so anyway, oh, and uh, Mike, where did you, you get that jacket from? This jacket. This yeah. is one of any Letterman Crew jackets that I have. And how did you get them? 
Uh, from various crew members who I've befriended, uh, three of them I got from uh, the head of CBS Marketing, uh, who came on the show and whatnot. This one here, I only put it on because I was wearing a white T-shirt and it was glowing like I was angelic. And I, yeah, I, yeah. So yeah. I thought I'll put back it on. There's all the ones that Checky had. None of them said pants. Uh, yeah, he gave a lot of his late show ones away. Um, this is the one from 1999 from from Late Show. Um, yeah, I can I can do an entire episode on all the jackets they had. They had one for every year uh, at CBS. But the the late night ones, Checky wore his late night one more than anything. The original one. It's the one yeah. Steve Wine has. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Okay. Well, anyway, any, a, anyway, I was just wondering because I've never seen that one. I, I yeah, a lot of others. I mean, Shecky got one every year. Yep. Yeah, and I've got, like I said, I got nine of them in the closet over here. I can show you a bunch of them, but uh, but the ones that Shecky usually wore were the um, were the originals. He mm -hmm. liked the late, put in the late show stuff. Uh huh. Okay. Okay. Cool. Well, that's all I have to talk about. <laughs> Unless you want to hear about lawyers and, and no, Alex, and, don't and, even bring that up. Come and, on, and landlords. Alex, still fighting that. It's been so many years. I know. I know. I know. Two more hostages have been released oh, by, they, by the by the landlords. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. Still holding two hostages, though. <laughs> yeah. You know, you know what? I got to tell you, I, 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 we don't usually get political on the show, and I'm not really, this isn't all that political, but uh, I just read about a person over at a at CAA, which is an, an agency, a talent agency, and she was on their, I don't know, their board of directors or whatever, and she had to resign from the board of directors because she posted something online, which as I read it, was not particularly terrible. I mean, it wasn't horrible. It was maybe she should have thought before she posted it, but it's getting to the point where anybody who has a, an opinion, contrary to, you know, to the prevailing opinion you're supposed to have, gets fired, uh, they yep. get their, you know, all kinds of horrible things happen to them. Nobody says, that you have to be pro-Israel in this deal, okay? I, I you know, I, I think you can, uh, uh, me in particular, I'm anti-Hamas, okay? But it doesn't mean necessarily I have to be pro-Israel. And what she posted was something about just Israel's response or something, and they got rid of her off the board of directors. And I'm thinking, you know, what is prevailing thought today, tomorrow, can be found to be wrong, okay, yep. as we do many times. And I think there's too much of this with, with this uh, co political correctness going on where you have to have the prevailing opinion. And if you don't, you're, you're well, she isn't out of a job. She's still, she represents like Reese Witherspoon. I was reading a whole bunch of them. And she's still got all her clients, but she just isn't on the board any longer. I, I don't know if 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 this if there isn't something wrong with that. I mean, oh, some, yeah. I think somebody can have an absolutely wrong opinion and not have to suffer consequences like this. You know, any thoughts on that at all? Yeah, that it should be okay. Yeah, I agree. There's yeah. one woman that like, 17 years ago or something said something when she was a teenager got fired from the board she was on. You know. Yeah, it's ridiculous. Hey, Paula. Yeah, I, I'm with, away from the from the Israel Hamas thing. I don't right. want to get to that. But uh, um, if, if, if you take a, a broad view, I mean, the Supreme Court is supposed to be dealing with this at some point, whatever's going to happen with that. But um, we're in an age where there's there are new problems and uh, um, and the social media is unregulated. And people are drawing conclusions about uh, what what constitutes free speech, and we need some kind of we need some kind of experts to get together and 
and make some rules because we don't have any rules. And I think we've, we've all been suffering from that. And the, the extremes on either side uh, are, make the news and everybody, you know, but, but the, 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 I think the underlying problem is that, that, you know, this is new and well, our constitution yeah. really doesn't, doesn't address it properly enough because at the time of the constitution, there wasn't any social media. Yeah. Right. 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 But you know, what? what's terrible is, is that uh, these things are going on a lot now where you have to, if you don't have the prevailing thought, you get fired or you get, you know, threatened. huh? you get threatened, get threatened, any, any one of a number of things. Now, uh, granted, uh, I, I think, quite frankly, uh, that uh, YouTube, for instance, which I put most of my programs on, I don't put this one on, has some kind of rules where if I say something that isn't the prevailing attitude, I can get thrown off by them. Oh, yeah. yeah. Put in jail. Huh? Put in Facebook jail. Yeah. Yeah. Get put, put in Facebook jail. Exactly. <laughs> and my feeling is, listen, I think you can even have a wrong opinion, a blatantly wrong opinion. But if that's, that's your good, opinion Alex. and you're being asked to come on a social media thing and and say your personal opinion then all bets are off you should be able to say it you can be yes but a lot of lies are getting uh, um, advertised because okay. they are thought of or claimed but, but to who, be who, opinion who decides what a lie is though? oh so that's, that's what i'm saying you know yeah. like there has to be some kind of some kind of legislation or some kind of regulation because there is no regulation at the moment and and so you know you're you're left with the swing from one extreme to another extreme as somebody who has been doing this for most of my life i found and accused occasionally of saying something wrong because that isn't the right opinion and then i was later on people would come up to me and go you were right about that alex you know, I got uh, in a lot of heat for saying it, but then later on, it turns out I was right. You know, I mean, I, I just, look, there are a lot of horrible, disgusting, vile people using social media, and people should know when they read social media that they're making a big, you know, they, they've got to watch it with a great sense of doubt, okay? People should, people should know. Good luck. Yeah, well, I mean... <laughs> You know, I mean, uh, so, uh, yes, uh, 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 Mike. So I think I think we're in a place now where um, I agree with everything that, that, that you guys are all saying. Um, like, I think growing up, I already intrinsically knew that Time magazine was different than the National Enquirer. I kind of knew that. Yeah. And um, I think social media right now has a lot of National Enquirer type, uh, you know, connotations to it. I, I Not to disparage that lovely publication but i'm just saying it's, it's there's a lot of rumor um and it's vile people but it's also well-meaning people people who like you know they believe what they believe and so they want to throw it out there heartfelt but these corporations unless they get somebody to sign a document saying you know okay you're not going to put such and such this is the corporate opinion of our company here if you want to work here you have to fall into these categories or, or whatever when it comes to what you put on social media I think they're way offside removing people because of opinions. Well, I'll give you a good example of something I got in trouble for. And unfortunately, I shouldn't have gotten in trouble for it because I didn't say it. OK, but they gave me they there the different types of things they can do to you on Facebook. But the worst is first, the worst is giving you a warning and then giving you a, a penalty or whatever. So that if you get three of those, you're banned forever from Facebook. Well, this thing was a warning. And the warning was that on a program that I did two and a half years ago, okay, it was stated some false information about, uh, about uh, COVID. I went back and listened to it. You know what it was? It was somebody on the show talking about some other site that had mistakenly said something about COVID. Because he repeated that mistake as the example of how bad this was, they said. I they said my site said it, 
And I and then I, I appealed it, saying that was just somebody relating to something he had seen and was complaining about it. And they still kept me, uh, still get, have, I still have the warning. Now, th that's what I'm talking about. You know, um, nothing I did, nothing I did, right? So, but I'm suffering by it. So how are they making those decisions? What 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 standard are they using well, here's to make what those happens. decisions? Algorithm. They've got a machine yeah. that listens to everything. They how they went back two years and suddenly decided that was the one that was a problem. When by the way, that same program was doubled over as a uh of as a non-live in other words, the live programs automatically posted. I then go and post another one of a non-live version of a recorded version like this one I will do after the show is over on on Facebook the other one the one that uh, that was I believe uh either one or the other the live or the recorded they didn't complain about it. it's the same exact show you know so what what I'm saying is and that we you know I don't know what that statement was about covid it, probably was t terribly wrong because I remember assailing it. Yeah. Uh, but somehow, uh, I think with a lot of stuff we we're learning about COVID now, part of what that got, that statement may, said may have been somewhat right in retrospect. So what we know today, and we hold up as truth, usually out of passion, at the moment, two years from now, could be completely true. We don't know, you know. So I, you know, and especially the way we trust the news and so on. There's so much. You talk about fake news. Yeah, there's a lot of it out there. You can go over to Fox and get one idea, and you can go over to, you know, over to MSNBC and get another idea. I watched this documentary that uh, Alexandria Pelosi did about the, the insurrectionists next door. And she went out and got a lot of people who've been, you know, charged by the government for invading the uh, the Capitol. And uh, one of them just said, well, you know, the problem I have is that I only watch one source for information. I only go to certain sources for information that I believe. I don't go to the others. So I thought this is the way things were. I thought that election was stolen or whatever, you know, because I watched Fox. And over at Fox, of course, was stolen. Sidney Powell told us so, you know. So this is, this is what happens. This bothers me a lot when I think we're, I, I went through the McCarthy era, which part of that was the House Un-American Activity Subcommittee. And I went to, as a 15 year old, I think it was, uh, my father went to protest it. So I went with him and I went into the San Francisco City Hall and up to the place where they were holding the hearings as a kid. Because I was a kid, oh, it's cute, let him in, you know. Uh, and I went and sat down. I watched lives ruin over false accusations off of saying, uh, you know, are you now, have you ever been a member of the Communist Party? Well, yeah, I was like 25 years ago, but I realized how stupid I was. That didn't matter. You were, the next day, I there was this guy did a daily radio show that I loved called San Francisco Story, and I, uh, I, I he he all of a sudden he's one of the people being grilled. Okay, he refused to testify on the grounds that it might intimidate him and. and what was not intimidate him? What's the intimidate, him, intimidate him or whatever <laughs> and incriminate him? And uh, the next day I turned on my radio, he's not there, and he was never there again. So that was the first lesson in life I had about this sort of thing. And so, any kind of witch hunting of this sort that happens, I'm against. And I think just because somebody posted somebody as a, something as a tweet, by the way, this person after the fact said, you know, I've talked to a lot of my Jewish friends and they've showed me where I was wrong and the error of my ways. And I humbly apologize. Yeah. Since when wasn't it okay to apologize? 
Exactly. Hey, I made a mistake. I screwed up. I had the wrong information. I had the wrong opinion. And all of a sudden, boom, you know, you're, you know, so that, that's always bothered me. Always bothered me. I'm glad you brought up McCarthy, man. I'm glad you brought up the uh, the idea of witch trial. Like this has been around forever. You look at what you're referring to. Where's witch, oh. witch from? Salem, well, like always had ebbs and flows in our society. It's human nature. And uh, this is the technological uh, equivalent of it right now as well, to. Uh, that's where I learned to, uh, that's where I learned to, to, to hate it, you know, to absolutely hate it. Because the next morning I turn on my radio, the guy is my favorite radio personality. He's not there anymore. And he never was there again. You know, I tuned in a couple of days later, figuring, yeah, maybe they just, he didn't show up that day or something. Uh, but that that's that, you know. But I don't want to get political, and I don't think I'm being political, but I do think that we have to be very careful about, the, and we should allow people to apologize, you know, and say, okay, you saw the error of your ways enough. You're back on the board again. <laughs> uh, but basically, it was because this person was taking a position that was not a popular position. It wasn't an anti-Semitic position it wasn't a pro Hamas position that wasn't what it was but it was a position that they felt would hurt the company you know wow yeah it's scary it's just scary but anyway hey there's Kevin he's a communist <laughs> <laughs> no they, they didn't do this for the communists I was sneezing no, the, yeah. <laughs> You hile Hitler and you get snot all over your finger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, oh, yeah, Alex. It, it, yeah. So anyway, I just want to bring that up because I, I read this and I, I went, gee, that's, that's terrible. You know, that, that this person is being persecuted for just having a thought. And I, I, what I would say to anybody out there who has a job, you know, who has a position, don't tweet. Just don't tweet. <laughs> Just don't ever twit, tweet, plot, whatever it's called. <laughs> do that. Uh, don't don't ever do that because you know you want something going to come back to haunt you, like having been a communist. That will because mm -hmm. that's in print forever. Yeah, uh, there's no expiration date for those things. And, oh, and by the way, you can remove the tweet, and people still, yeah, you know, well, you wrote it. We made a copy of it here. Your toast. Yeah. So anyway, how you doing? Oh, there's Mandy. I just saw her. She's there. She's uh, at her post. Hello. Doing her job. Yeah. Yeah. It's fun to watch other people work. Yeah, it is. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Ah. Let's see here. Anybody else working? No. No. Just just uh just watch hanging. Mandy. Just hanging. Just watch Mandy. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but uh, oh, hey, there's a shooting investigation near Dunbar Playground. Where is Dunbar Playground, Matt? I don't know. And and they supposedly have a live video of it. Um, I just have a still of the live video. We have this thing. It's called Citizen. You can get it online, I think, where you are. And Citizen tells you everything near you that's going on that's a crime. Stabbing a block away. Like, like there's yeah. 10 offenders near us. Uh, uh, 10, 10 sex yeah. offenders near us. Yeah, that's on the map, too. <laughs> Wonderful. Yeah. My oh, wife signed up for one called Next Door. Yeah, we have that. Oh, is that another one? Yeah. yeah, and you can't get rid of it. You, you, there's no way to get rid of it once you sign up. Oh, really? I haven't found out. There's got to be a way. Yeah, it's on her, it's on her Gmail, and, and she gets all these notices on her Gmail, and I've gone in there and tried to unsubscribe <laughs> or whatever. It did, doesn't happen. Well, you I'll you to, um, Just go in and, and, and do a change next one, door and delete it. Change, yeah, change one letter, change one letter of her email and the settings. And then it'll go to nowhere. True. Oh, very good. That's very good suggestion. Yeah. 
or or block their block them as spam in your email settings. Oh, well, thing that really uh, uh, you know uh, that's uh, getting to me is uh, I don't know what's getting to me. I forgot now. Everything. <laughs> I get in the middle of a sentence and I forget it now. That's the problem. Yep. Yeah. Me too. Oh, you, you do that for Alex? Huh? Who said? What did you say? Somebody said something. Paula, you keep freezing. Is I, anybody oh, else? Am I freezing, folks? No. Not me. No. Is could that you, me? Yeah, it could be you. I mean, it could be a lot of times, depending on where you are, there's like a, a, a okay. high bandwidth or something going through and it freezes up. But then, it, then it, you know, sometimes the freezing can be on my side, but I've got, I've got this incredible bandwidth. I've got almost a gig up and a gig down. So, uh, and so, uh, and, and now they want me to subscribe to getting two gigs for another $30 a month, which yeah. I've been considering doing. Uh, why? But, why, Alex? I'll tell you why, because I do stuff where I need that kind of speed. Yep. You know, I, I can, I can post all my shows and do everything in half the time that I do it now. That's why, Marjorie. Also, you can watch as many things as you want at the same time on the TV set and not slow down my, uh, you know, my whatever here. So, Vernon, just oh. go into your account settings and deactivate your account on Nextdoor. On Nextdoor? It's on the bottom of your account settings. And then... Uh... Scroll all the way to oh, the sorry. bottom. I think the reason you're having a problem there. Deactivate your account. Yeah, Vernon, the reason you're having a problem is you're just simply going to the, un, you're looking for the unsubscribe and they don't have one. Yeah, that could be. Yeah, and, go to the uh, next door account itself. Go, then, the, go to your next door account. It'll, there's some kind of way you can get there from all yeah. those, the things on the bottom. <laughs> and then you just go uh, unsub, unsubscribe. Because it is irritating. Yeah. yeah. They don't. Yeah. Uh, they don't want you to get rid of them. That's why they get different. But Vern, how, how are you going to know the new scandals about who didn't pick up their dog's poop in your neighborhood? Yeah. What are you going to do? <laughs> are the kids ringing well, and running? I've, always, I've, also got, I've also got the Ring app on my phone, so I get to watch all the porch pirates. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you the negative thing here, okay, more than any, is Marjorie. She, she subscribed to this thing and she reads it all the time. It comes up on her phone, you know, comes up on my phone too. I can deactivate it for her, but it does come up. And the other day we go to the bank. She has to go to the bank because she wants to get some money for the cleaning woman, you know, whatever. So she goes in and I figure I'll wait outside. And she goes, no, come in with me. I don't want somebody robbing me. <laughs> and I went, Marjorie, the bank's open. You know, if they're going to rob anything, they're going to go into the bank, you know. Uh, and and she was very paranoid about it. And <laughs> would you admit these that, alerts. Well, wouldn't you admit that part of that paranoia came from looking at the Citizens Act? Yes. Because it tells you like 30, 30 yards away, somebody was stabbed. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and that that after you start reading that stuff, that'll get you really paranoid. You didn't get stabbed; somebody else did. Yeah, that means they already hit that area, like so you're clean. Feet away, and who wants to be near anything like that? Yeah, well, so you're not, talking about social media. Yeah, that's the reason I dropped Facebook and I dropped Twitter after Elon Musk bought them. It just, there was just too much crap that did nothing to enhance my life. Do you know he's losing business on um, the former oh. Twitter? Now hey. Poor yeah. baby. Yeah. Poor baby, yeah. Yeah, he's lost about 30%. Yeah, a lot of people. You still on CompuServe, <laughs> never was. I never was on CompuServe. Okay. I never was on AOL. Prodigy? <laughs> never Netscape. was on Prodigy. Tell them that. Yahoo's still around. I'm on Yahoo. Are you really? <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, I signed up for uh, an email account with them when they had something to try to compete with Google called Ymail, ymail.com. But they ended up getting rid of Ymail. So 
It's just they ever answer the, they, Did they ever answer the question? Uh, <laughs> why mail i'm yahoo mail account that's what i use my really? wife was saying today so what's the difference between email and gmail well gmail is it, letters it, no it, yeah. it, it's and i told her i said email stands for google. electronic Email's mail google. email is is an electronic mail yeah, yeah it's an electronic google. mail it's and it's google. google and i i marjorie uses it i can't stand it i i have an account but i i only use it when i want to sign up for something that quite frankly i don't care if anybody i do that with my account. yahoo anything huh? i don't want to get it catch all their crap i i, I sign up under my my yahoo account the, and i can totally I'm, ignore it yeah yeah, I've had I did that a long time ago with my Hotmail, and I still have a Hotmail account. And oh, I've got a Hotmail All too. junk. I don't ever look at it. Hotmail became something else, but you could keep yeah, live.com. Outlook. Out Outlook. became Outlook, but you could keep live.com. It went to my live. My email address com. is still Hotmail.com. Yeah. <laughs> really? Yeah. Yeah, I still you got know what mine is? Gabnet.net. Mm -hmm. yeah. That's well, I've got email. about 12 email addresses, but yeah but I, I pay for that you know. I, don't, I, don't hey, I feel like i just saw somebody not too long ago that had an aol i'm not even kidding what i feel, I feel like aol not too long ago that said their email address was aol.com wow aol yeah, I, know I see it often it's still around aol is still in business we have a friend who has earthlink.com <laughs> i have earth i had earthlink yeah my brother's email is earthlink.com. Who was it that I, I knew? Who was it that I knew had Earthlink and kept it? Still has it. It was <laughs> earthlink.net. Yes. Net. Yeah. yeah dot net. Yeah. I just have so many things with my email address from that long ago that I just don't want to change it. Me either. Wait, who did I hear? Was it Earthlink that became Scientology? <laughs> oh, no. Scientology owned it. Yeah. Mm. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Oh, look, look who comes here. Who comes here? Here comes the lovely and attractive Albert Reynoso. Come on out. There <laughs> we go. Albert? There he is. Hello, oh, right. Albert. Albert. Speaking of Netscape. <laughs> oh, good. It's not porn. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Can you hear us, uh, Albert? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, there's stuff going on behind me. So sorry. Hi, everybody. All right. Hi. Usually it's the cats, actually. Just one going, cat. Just one cat. See him soon, you, you, you're down to one cat? Down to one. Well, the originals are all gone. This is this is one of the replacements. So how does that one feel about being the only cat? She loves it. <laughs> she was in a shelter before that, and she didn't like that. So. Yeah. Yeah. yeah that's Hello. good it's always I, I we'd get a cat but i i uh i figure the cat will outlive me <laughs> and, and every day when i wake up the cat will look at me and go you know i'm gonna be here after you're gone <laughs> very much doubt that huh why in your will you, you think i would outlive a cat i bought you're gonna outlive everything you're gonna outlive, <laughs> outlive all of us well yeah. you know uh, but you and I, you and I had a very good discussion about life after death and so on, you know. And uh, I still didn't feel better about death. So, you know, you have no fear of death, right? No. Oh, okay. no. Right. I, think, I think what people usually fear about death is pain. They don't want pain. Every time you see somebody dying, it's usually in a painful way. Rarely do you hear about people who die in their sleep or just drop in the street or something like that. Well, I There's think some I'm illness most, or a truck or a war or something. It's the pain that people. I don't think die. the most common form of one of the most common forms of death is heart attack. So that's so, not, uh, that's not easy. That's got oh, pain involved. Well, if, I don't know. Some people just go boom like that. My uncle died during the sleep, which is the best way to go. Yep, that's the way I want to go. Well, yeah. you know, what is, is that the best way to go? Because my fear is what I fear about most about death is all I'm going to miss. <laughs> you know, um, so uh, selfish. Who was, so selfish. I saw, who, who was it I saw doing an interview about death? And that's the one thing he said he, he, he says he's not afraid of death, 
but it, he finds it an annoyance. Okay. <laughs> You know, because, you know, you, you just can't do anything anymore. It, it's yeah. not scheduled. It's not, scheduled. <laughs> yeah. you know, you don't yeah. know, you know, and, um, and, and then I, uh, yesterday, Marjorie asked me the question. I tell you want to tell them the question. Yeah, you asked the question first. What was the question? Your question was, do you think I'm going to go before you? I said, I hope not, because you I know, want you to do it. It's never been shit. a question I have ever had to ask any girlfriend or wife that I ever had. Hmm. But at this age, it was a, a, a decent question. And her answer was, well, don't before you tell me where all your stuff is. And how to get rid of it. How to get rid of it. <laughs> <laughs> But you know, you can always, if you want to know what to do technically, you can always call your friend Carlos and he can come up and help you get rid of the stuff you don't need, take the That's stuff he wants, point. you know, right? I hasten yeah. to say you can both go together if you like to. It's possible. <laughs> it is possible. We could try oh, that. Here's the, that's the pro problem with, with a, a, a suicide pact is that one or the other is going to have is going to they're both going to put let's say we're both going to put the gun in our mouth at the same time Ew. and i fire but she decides not to yes you know, how do i have a guarantee that it's truly a suicide pact? why don't you just you don't do it this? by guns that's for sure <laughs> well yeah you don't do it by guns because somebody else has to find the body yep so I read this book, this book by the Hemlock Society, yeah. and it was on uh, death. And it uh, were we talking about this the other night, uh, Charlie? No. I think you brought up the Hemlock Society to me on that show. But anyway, uh, uh, they said the best way to die uh, is to go to the top of a mountain during the winter and freeze to death. <laughs> to begin with, they say it's a very pleasant death. Yeah. Very pleasant. And nobody has to find you necessarily or come across a body who's blown his head off or broken his neck or whatever. Well, they'll find you when the thaw is. Well, yeah. so, so they find you and then they, you know. they 30,000 years later, yeah. Yeah, 30,000 <laughs> years later, yeah. But I mean, they say that's the best way to do it because they said the worst way to do a, a suicide is any way in which you do it in which somebody else is going to find the body. Because that's inconsiderate. Because they're going that that thought is going to linger with them for the rest of their life. You know. It sounds like it's it sounds like it would be. Hmm? What? Go ahead. Go it, ahead. It, it sounds like it would be very difficult making travel arrangements for that. Um. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's what I was going to say. There's two problems for Alex. One is that he's not climbing up any mountain. Exactly. <laughs> you, you don't go out of the building. You're not climbing up a mountain. And number two, can you imagine Alex having nobody find him? He wants to be found. He wants people to know. Here I lie. Get do something. Do something. No, I mean, I don't want to, but I don't want to be in a condition where it would be upsetting for somebody to see. That's why I've often said that suicide using a gun is very hot, is a very hostile action. Yes, it is. Meant to hurt other people. Yeah. Yeah. But just make sure you keep your clothes on. Oh. <laughs> you know, I, I've never told anybody this. I do the show in my underpants. <laughs> yeah, I saw it. No, no. Yeah. So do we all. <laughs> what? No, you didn't see it. I put my underpants on when I have somebody here who's doing the show. <laughs> Some of us don't even wear underpants. Yeah, I don't wear underpants. Why bother? This is I don't wear of, underpants. This is one of the largest crowds we've had. We have 15 people right now. <laughs> oh, look who's joining. Yeah. Because look who's Don't joined you know. us. The lovely and attractive Don Giller. And he should be here any second. He's connecting his audio. Here he comes. Oh, there's Don Giller. Is he wearing oh, pants? <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I was watching uh, one of your videos the other day. The uh, Ask Mr. Melvin videos. That's a four-parter, I think. Yeah, some of those are very funny. Very funny. I just wanted to announce that I'm still on AOL. 
<laughs> really? I'm proud of it. Really? <laughs> so how long have you been an AOL member? And do they send you any kind of stuff for having been a member this long? I get free dinners. <laughs> uh 1990 fall of 90 i think wow you know it was interesting for shecky the late shecky uh told me a story where he and uh, uh who was the guy who was the uh uh the you know <laughs> no i don't know who, 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 was, who was the cbs guy over Vinny Vinny Vivali, he and Vinny Vivali were walking past the newly built Time uh, uh, AOL Time Building. Okay, in uh, in uh, where do you go? What's it? Circle. Uh, Columbus Circle. Columbus Circle. <laughs> Forget <laughs> it. I'm giving up now. I'm dead. <laughs> anyway, uh, oh, you uh, kitty. Anyway. And, and they were looking at it being built. It said, uh, you know, AOL time Warner, whatever. <laughs> and uh, Shecky looked over at Vinny and said, by the time this thing opens it do its doors, AOL will not be on that building. Mm. And they, the, the you know, sale had just gone through. It was a whole new deal. By the time it opened up, AOL wasn't on the building. It was gone. Yeah, that was the biggest mistake that AOL ever made. And secondly, the worst mistake that Warner's ever made. Well, the worst was they tried to put the two names together and it went A-W-O-L and <laughs> <laughs> it, didn't, it didn't work out. Good night, everybody. <laughs> Amazing. Uh I hear you like being called Kitty. Oh yeah, I, did, I, did, did I tell you that? Uh, no. I, I heard it on one of, one of your rambles. But one of my rambles, yeah, one of my rambles, I said that, you know, everybody has these things with the, uh, what's the term they're using now? The, uh, you know, whether you use Mr. or Mrs. or uh, then there are all these other ones. And I said, um, my pronoun, I, my requ required pronoun for me is Kitty. Yeah. Yeah, so everybody has to call me Kitty Bennett. That's sweet. You're yeah. going to regret that. <laughs> <laughs> Why are you going to do a video about it? We'll just we'll just keep on addressing you as Kitty. Oh, okay, fine. That's fine. <laughs> Feel good. It's it's not V and thou. Yeah. So uh, anyway, <laughs> what's happening? Uh, anything happening down in Florida we should know about, um, Albert? Not that I know of. Somebody want to tell me? Yeah. You, do you go out much? As much as anybody else, I go out more, way more than you, I'm sure. But <laughs> well, you know yeah. something. So relative. It, it, for, for you, it's easy to go out because you have a car and you can go out and drive. You know, I just thought about it the other day. Marjorie said, "You know, you really got to get out and do some walking." But you know, when I had a car in San Francisco, I never walked anywhere. I'd prefer not to drive. I'd rather be in New York walking and taking public transportation. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Well, wait till you get to be my age with the neuropathy. And... I'm never going to be your age. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Jet Blue plane tipped? No, I heard about that. What's that? They, they, they didn't load it properly, so they put too much weight in the back, so it was sitting there, and it just went up. Like this. Oh, it's, it's tipped? Yeah, it happens <laughs> if they don't load it properly. Wow. Wow. What's happening down in Kentucky, uh, Vernon? Well, <clears throat> I couldn't tell you because I'm in Virginia right Virginia. now. Virginia. <laughs> <laughs> oh. <laughs> I'm in my two week my two week Virginia mountain retreat. Oh yes. Oh, yeah. Yes. You do that every year. Yep. This is the seventh year. What do you have? Do you have a timeshare or something? I have a timeshare that uh, allows us to come to this uh, one bedroom apartment and uh, well, the, the same building, but it's usually a different apartment each year and uh, we allowed to bring our dog. So we walk a lot. We read a lot of books. And just it, it gets you off the grid. Exactly. Yeah. Where in Virginia? It's uh, near the town of Mount Jackson, Virginia, which is 
about halfway between um, it's halfway between Winchester and Stanton along I-81. Yeah, like I know that. <laughs> yeah, it's in the Shenandoah Valley. Oh, okay. Okay. I've heard songs <laughs> about that. Yeah. Uh, and uh, Charlene, we, how have you been, Charlene? I'm Anything new? I'm doing good. I'm doing good. I had a really good weekend. I had a really family weekend. I had a get together with all my cousins since we have we only get together a couple times a year and then uh, my uh, my uh i always say my grand girls they came to see us so i had a good weekend i don't know where any of my cousins are i don't even know if they're still alive i had one that was in movies uh and uh he did a movie his big movie was in a movie called oh, what was it called i can't remember now Oh, he, he did Black Christmas. What's your cousin's name? Uh, Michael Rappaport. Oh, okay. Yeah. Michael, Michael Rappaport. Rappaport. Yeah. Must be it. There's a there's a, a famous Michael Rappaport who's yeah. kind of a loudmouth. Well, I've actor. Been, well, actually, I think he started using the name. Rapport. It was pronounced. Uh, uh, oh, is it Rapport? Rapport. Yeah. So anyway, he uh, he did a uh, uh, picture. You remember Black Christmas? This picture, of Black Christmas, with no. Olivia Hussey was in it, I think. And he dated her for that while they were making that movie. <laughs> but he didn't. He got to start having a movie career, and then he didn't have a movie career anymore. I don't know what happened to him. I he did show up in San Francisco one time, and then I have another cousin who lives up in uh, up in. Albany, but I don't even know if she's still around, you know, because she was just a few years younger than I am, you know. So, but I never hear from any of my Black like, Christmas. huh? No, uh, Black Christmas, nineteen seventy four. Yeah, it's his name on that. Uh, you yeah, look? Michael Report. Yeah, R A P P O R T. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And yeah. And Olivia Hussey, right? I didn't look her up. Yeah. Yeah, it was, it was right. with us, Olivia Hussey. Yeah, and Hussey. he went with her for a while. Yeah. And, and and then he, I don't know what happened to him. So I don't know where my cousins are. So whoever is having fun with their cousins, well, <laughs> luck, you know. Uh, but uh, so you went and had a weekend with your cousins. Yes, and, and which what was did good. You, did you do anything incredible? Oh, no. Well, we incredibly went out to lunch. Of course, so. that's what I figured. <laughs> No, we went out to lunch and it was nice. There was eight of us, it's four cousins and spouses. So that's nice to be able to get together. And then I came home and my granddaughters were here. So I know I'm like a broken record about my grandkids, but. Well, grandkids are great because when they go home, you don't have to deal with them. <laughs> you know? Yep. You can dote on them. You can uh, enjoy them and everything. And they, then eventually their parents come along and they go home. Yep. The best yep. job in the world. Yeah, that's right. And I'll tell you when what, you, when they say you're, when you're, they say I don't want to go home, I want to stay with you. That's the, the best very part. Young looking Mike Chisholm actually is a grandfather. Yeah. Yeah. She is my everything. Oh, she, yeah. she oh, oh she's adorable. Beauty. Yeah. yeah. She's his my wife. Hmm? <laughs> young looking, he is young. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. how old are you now, Mike? 47. So how did you manage? Wow. I guess you could be a grandfather at forty-seven. Sure. When? 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 She yeah. Biologically, it's possible. Uh, my situation, it's more. It's the modern family uh, way. My wife is five years older than me, and she started early. And so my stepson, when he had uh, Alara. Oh, oh, I see. Okay, so this yeah. is kind of a step grandchild. It is, but yeah, uh, yeah, she's yeah. my favorite on the planet. Yeah, Marley is despicable. <laughs> <laughs> And how is that, uh, Don? Oh, pardon me? What's well, that, Judy? How, how is it morally despicable? Oh. Well, it's Canadian. That's the that's a, that's a first problem. <laughs> You're not getting ready to leave, are you, Mandy? Looks like. She leaves yeah. before our show is over. I know. I'm sorry. I have these, in a row. these classes have, like, changed around it where I work out. And they're, like, at 530, so I have to leave. Oh, wait, a Wait a minute. Why do you have to leave at 5 30? 
Just I have to leave to get to a class that's at 530. Oh, oh, I see. And what kind of class is that? It's a, well, it's not normally a class I go to. It's a girl that I teach with. She's teaching the class that I normally teach. So I wanted to go to it. And you teach what exactly? Kettlebells. Um, wow. It's like exercise class. Just lost it. We should, the kettlebell. Next one. Yeah. Wait. Okay. Well, anyway, I know you're probably going to lose our, your signal soon, but yeah. Keep it up as long. Freeze up. Keep it up as Thank long. Thank you, Andy. Bye bye. We'll bye. Say, we'll say goodbye now. Yeah. <laughs> oh, it's such a nice day down there in Georgia. That's beautiful. Oh, yeah. It's great. Yeah. Perfect uh, fall weather. Wow. It's terrific. Just yeah, I went camping this weekend. It was so great. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. We didn't even get around to you. You went camping. Well, in a camper, not, not in a camper. <laughs> oh, well, that, that's my kind of camping, yeah. <laughs> that's glamping. Well, it ain't that glamorous, but. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, anyway, where'd you go? Where'd you go? So you just, you went with a camper and then you parked it somewhere and stayed there in it overnight? Yeah, it's, um, it's called Tallulah Falls. Oh. And it's just in the North Georgia mountains. Wow. I told Marjorie the other day, there was some kind of thing on TV where they mentioned Stone Mountain. Yeah, my parents lived in Stone Mountain and for I like have, 30 years. I have been to Stone Mountain. They have that, oh, have you? They have that Confederate memorial there, right? Yeah, yeah. Is it still there? Oh, yeah. They're never going to get rid of that. Uh, oh, uh, what a look at that. Kettle uh, uh, warm up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Of all the people to have a, <laughs> a, a chart on using kettlebells, it would have to be Don Giller. <laughs> I don't even have a kettlebell in there. She's got mama stuff. But yeah. It's great. It's a great workout. Yeah. But well. anyway, bye, y'all. Just wanted to pop in. Say hi, hi y'all. Bye, bye, man. Okay. So we're losing her. Uh, there we go. Anyway. Um, did you do anything interesting at all, Albert? No, this weekend. Mm, no, no. Got drunk. A couple of <laughs> <days. laughs> You're coming to visit. You're, you're coming Albert. to visit us soon, aren't you? Coming to visit. Yeah, the beginning of the month. I'm coming. The first. Well, that's yes. just like next week. Yes, yeah, so, uh, uh, a week and a half. Hide your jewelry and your valuables. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we don't get evicted while you're here. Uh, you can enjoy the place. Well, what's the occasion? You just uh, just uh, visiting? Yeah, I'm visiting my daughter. She she lives up there. So. Well, you're visiting us too. Well, that's that's the whole thing. But uh, <laughs> you know, nothing against you. But if um, if Jesse weren't up there, probably I would never go up to New York again. She yeah. in school? Uh, no, she works up there. She, she graduated, I think, two years. Oh, you enjoy your time back in New York when you yeah, come. Yeah, I do. Here. I do. But we we have no um, agenda whatsoever except to spend time with her. Usually, we want to go to this restaurant or you know this museum or something. But now, n nothing, zero. So, where in the city does she live? Or what area? What neighborhood? Well, she she lives in uh, in Queens. Um, but her boyfriend now of a year or so, she, he lives in New Jersey. So. We're probably going to take a couple of jaunts to New Jersey, I guess. I don't a couple know. of trips to New Jersey? Oh, okay. So we'll bring some foul air back for you, Alex. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And then you, she, they always come, you always come to our place with intense amounts of pot. Oh. <laughs> no, that's not true. That would be illegal to do that. <laughs> not anymore. You can't bring, no, it's still illegal to carry it across state lines. State lines it's yeah. still a federal class one a felony so uh yes I, I i can get the pot there i guess and and, and if i know marjorie miller i know where pot is you got that right <laughs> yeah well I, we have a lot of pot here now everybody, everybody comes by like we have some friends in california who always bring out like vapes and the things you put and in carlos and every time my friend carlos and his girlfriend brisit it's all rolled yeah, you know what he, to this day our friend carlos but it's new jersey to new york and you're not doing breaking any laws by doing that 
Yes, you technically are. Yeah. <laughs> not supposed to transport it again uh, across state lines. <laughs> well, but New Jersey is barely a state. <laughs> That's why. <right. laughs> <laughs> oh boy, Giller's the best. Giller's funny. He's very <laughs> funny. You make, me, you make me laugh. Okay, Kitty. <laughs> <laughs> Kitty. <laughs> okay, Kitty. Yeah, that's, that's my that's my uh, um, what, what what pronoun name? Non pronoun? What is it? What do they call it? Uh, I think it's they a, usually call it an animal, a pet. <laughs> Kitty? No. Huh? Kitty? Yeah, don't don't call me Mister. Call me Kitty. It's preferred preferred pronoun is my preferred is, pronoun. Yeah, it's Kitty. Yeah, you got it. Gender neutral. <laughs> non binary. But no and milk. Put singles in his G string. And only <laughs> cat food. I love now it says on, on, on a lot of things that I get Mr., Mrs., Miss, Other. <laughs> <laughs> then you have to put on down, uh, down what your other is. Oh, I put down kitty. Is <laughs> that a pronoun? I when, when did they become pronouns? That's not really a problem. Well, it's, it's whatever you use to describe yourself. And some people don't want to use Mr. or Miss or Miss, Mrs. or, um, you know, Miss or anything like that. Uh, they they want to use something that they've come up with. And there are some weird ones out there. Wow. <laughs> yeah, kitty. Yeah. Kitty? I mean, there, there are some people who I, I think maybe a better pronoun would be Burger. <laughs> Burger Bennett. That'd be very nice. Hello, Burger Bennett. Yeah. But anyway, I'm, I'm not so much pronoun as against noun. Uh, <laughs> Did you do anything interesting this weekend? Me? You, yes, Andrew Deutsch. Yeah, I went to a wedding. Oh. Oh, really? Yep. Did you what, was it good food? Nope. <laughs> what? Pardon? They didn't have food? No, they had food. It wasn't very good. Yeah. Really? Oh. Yeah. It was a real simple, simple wedding over at the Chesapeake Bay. It was nice. The view, the view from the place was nice over the water. Well, what but... did they have for food then if it wasn't very good? They had like a kind of a barbecue thing that wasn't well made. Beans and stuff I don't eat and dry meat. Wow. Yeah. And you and you were wearing a mask, so. No, actually, I wasn't. Well, I think the, I best, wasn't the, the best the best the meal I ever had at, at a wedding was I went to a wedding with Shecky and uh, his friend Randy and myself, and I can't remember who it was for. It was somebody's daughter. And I oh, they brought me along because I'm always the designated driver because I don't drink, mm. right? Uh, and the, but the food. <laughs> My God, these parents wanted to kill everybody with too much food. I mean, oysters and lobsters and this and that. And that. I mean, it was amazing. Just amazing. And they allow pets. <laughs> <laughs> Even kitties. Yeah. Even kitties. Yeah. Oh, boy, I'm never going to hear the end of that one now. <laughs> no, no, you're not. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So, uh, uh, but yeah, it was, it was odd. It was a, a, a couple in there a little bit older than me. They, mm -hmm. Both of them had lost their spouses and got married and had this event and it wasn't, it was all right. The, the ceremony itself was very nice. Their, yeah. one of their daughters did the, did the ceremony and it was, a, it was a nice thing, but the food kind of sucked. Yeah. The oh, indoors or outdoors? Food. Hmm? Was it indoors or outdoors? It is. Was it, they asked if it was an indoor or an outdoor wedding. I was indoors, but we had a, it was right on the Chesapeake. So you could look out the window and see the boats and the, yeah, the food everything was going on. Shit, so what's the point? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nice. It was decent, nice company. They don't, they don't watch you on this broadcast, do they? I hope <laughs> no, they have no idea I'm on this broadcast. Okay. Marjorie, <laughs> however, if I am. That's a good point. <laughs> Marjorie, Thank you, tell, tell them what we did this weekend. Nothing. Thank you very much. That's our <laughs> usual weekend now. Yeah, we watch television together. Yep. I'm so tired of her asking me what's on tonight. What, what's on? Well, you know everything. 
the PTO the club. I keep forgetting now. You have so much stuff, you know. Yeah, since Pat Robertson died, what the heck are you watching on TV? There's nothing worth <laughs> watching any longer. Pat Robertson dead. He's almighty, you know. <laughs> What was that documentary we watched today, which was terrific? Best documentary I've seen in a long time. Yes. Called American Oz. And it's the history of L. Frank Baum. Hmm. Oh. oh. And it was fascinating. Just absolutely fascinating. It's on YouTube. Watch it. It's on YouTube. It was a PBS uh, American experience, I think. Yeah, it was great. We're just amazed how good it was. We thought it was going to be about the making of the movie and things like No, it's about L. Frank Baum and the kind of life. And how it led up to the movie. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah, he died before the movie, 20 years before the movie. But the, his wife was still alive when the, when, uh, the 1939 Wizard of Oz came out. So, you know. So anyway, oh, hey, listen, we're run, we've run out, we have run out of time. My God. My goodness. Where does it go? <laughs> Where does it go? Um, oh, by the way, we'll thank uh, uh, Mandy right now so that, you know, she's uh, she's represented in our closing. <laughs> I thank you very much, Charlene, for being here as always. Vernon, nice to see you on vacation. Sorry I made the mistake by thinking you were in Kentucky. But, you know, the wall kind of looks like a Kentucky wall. So, I, you know, it's hard for me to tell. They'll, uh, they'll try to get along without me, I'm sure. Yeah. Len LaFresco, how are you doing? Good, sir. Thank you. Okay. And and thank you for calling. He's always there before anybody else waiting. <laughs> he and Charlie and uh, and uh, Bender. Uh, Bender. Burger. How is Bender, by the way? Is he all right? Is he? Yeah, we haven't there? seen him in a while. He's, he's, he's got he's something he's working at this time. I guess he's okay. I should write him. I should write yeah, him. Yeah, he was a nice guy. Yeah, Marjorie, thank you so much. Uh, Anytime. Mike, <laughs> thank he's you. Very nice. Uh, uh, and of course, uh, our old friend, uh, Paul Levin. Paula, you're the best. Uh, we love you. And uh, Charlie, you're the best. We love you. Uh, <laughs> And uh, Andrew Deutsch, always good when you call. Kevin, always wonderful to have you here. Albert, we got to do another couple of things for the late show again. Anytime you want. It's good to I'll, see I'll, you. I'll let you know. I'll write you and you'll write back. And finally, Don Giller, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, I just found the, the, the YouTube suggestion, American Oz. So I thought, yeah, I'll it's watch. great. It's really good. It is really well worth watching. It, it's, yeah, no, thanks. It's not what I thought it was going to be. Right. And finally, uh, ladies and gentlemen, signing us off. He has that privilege, by the way. Is Edward Berger. Who That's all, me, folks. Let me, let, me, let, me, <laughs> let me do that again. Let me do that. Hey. Again. Okay, Edward right. Berger, who signs us off by saying. That's all, folks. Hey. Bye, everybody. Bye. Bye. Thank you, Alex.